Have you ever wondered how your sales performance compares against your competitors and peers? The B2B Sales Benchmark Report provides the definitive guide to what success looks like in 2021. See how you compare in terms of win rate, sales cycle, average deal value, relationships, and engagement. You can see the results and get the full report at ebster.com forward slash B2B dash sales dash benchmarks. This is Sales Ops Demystified, the number one most downloaded podcast in sales operations. We invite the brightest minds in sales operations onto the show to deconstruct the why, what, and how behind rep productivity, forecasting, metrics, and all things revenue. This podcast is brought to you by Ebster, the leading customer engagement platform for Salesforce. Hello and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales of Demystified podcast. We are joined by Guy Weigart, who's currently VP of Sales Solutions at SimilarWeb. Now, I'm not 100% sure what Sales Solutions is, but I'm sure I'm going to find out and Guy is going to explain this for us. So Guy, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Well, you'll definitely find out and uh, thank you for having me. My pleasure. So can, can we first answer, answer that question? I know you have experience in sales operations, and I can probably guess what sales solutions would be, but could you explain what that is and why you guys are calling this thing that? For sure. So um, essentially, my role in similar web is to uh, manage a business unit that is uh, selling a product line for B2B sales organizations. So when we say sales solution, essentially similar webs uh, solution for uh, B2B salespeople, uh, which is a, a bit like the LinkedIn sales navigator business unit of LinkedIn five years ago. Exactly. Okay. So we're expecting massive growth is what you're saying. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And so your job is to equip the sales team to sell. What's the product called? Is it just called SimilarWeb? Or? So right now we're, we're calling it SimilarWeb Sales Solution, which is uh, okay, not the yeah, most yeah. Uh, sexy name. We're still uh, yeah. we're considering rebranding. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, w- my job essentially is uh, it's a kind of like a GM role. So my job is Got first it. to develop the strategy and the product and then to sell it to the market. So this makes total sense. So it's not a different way of explaining a sales department within a business. It's a separate product. Correct. Cool. And so your job now is is not just limited to managing a sales team. It's more holistic in that you're managing the product, but you're also working out how you're going to sell the thing. Exactly. Amazing. Everything from product marketing, strategy operations, like, yeah, the whole thing. Cool. And who are you reporting into then? Uh, I'm reporting to the chief business officer, who is the essentially C-level that is managing the four uh, business units in the company. Got it. Awesome. And so just to give us a bit of a taste, how many people do you have within uh, your product area? Sure. So um, similar web as a whole, just to give you a kind of a bit of a drill, and similar web as a whole is uh, about 500 people. Um we have about uh, 200 people in our go-to-market at the moment, in our kind of whole commercial organization. Uh, I'm managing a team of um, six directly, um, which is more like the ops, business, strategy, marketing side of things. Um, and uh, the colored, uh, I'd say like the dotted line um, uh, salespeople that report uh, into our solution it's about 20 people. So overall, let's say 25-ish. Got it. So you have six people within your team, but then you also have 20 people helping you sell the thing. Exactly. Amazing. So I think that's what we're going to be talking more about. Um, but before we get to that, what is the sales tech stack you guys are using to help sell the sales solution? 
Um, so first, we were big believers in uh, drinking our own whiskey. So obviously, uh, we're using a lot our own solution uh, for prospecting. So we're using a lot the similar web solution for sales people um, internally. Um, I'd say that um, uh, we use Salesforce's CRM. Uh, we have actually we in similar web we have quite a lot of um, uh, sales tools. We use uh, things like um, Salesloft for our outreach. Um, campaigns, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, etc. We, we actually use quite a lot. Got it. So you are using Sales Navigator, but hopefully not for much longer. Uh, yeah, I mean, we see Sales Navigator as a, as a complementary tool, right? Like Sales oh, Navigator okay, cool. is mastering a lot the, the contact and networking, the social, where we have a lot of information on companies, on digital performance of companies, which is complementary to what uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator offers. Got it. Now, before we move into the rest of the interview, you have done just sales operations roles previously, right? I've done uh, sales operations and uh, head of sales type of roles or commercial director role. Got it. But now you've moved into a more holistic, because I assume you're there's some product management as well, right? Correct. Yes. So why did you move out of just the selling things into the selling things and building things world? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, I think that my, um, I guess I have to go back a bit to, to my uh, journey and how did I get to this world to begin with. I started my career in um, in um, in the shipping world, actually, in uh, some sort of business finance role, kind of like a classic FP&A role that, and grew up in that uh, domain. Um, but after uh, five years in that domain, I decided I wanted to move closer to the customer and be uh, a, a bit more innovative or in an innovative company. Um, I've done a, an MBA in France and then I started uh, a sales operations career in a company called Quidio in the ad uh, advertising technology space. Um, and um, through, uh, since then, I mean, I'm happy obviously to share um, more about like the, the experience in Credo in a second and, uh, and, and, and the rest of the companies. But since then, essentially, I kind of went on in this journey of getting closer and closer to um, the customers, right? So I've started in sales ops, moved into sales and, and working with sales people and directly with, um, with customers. And in my current role, uh, I guess I combined the, my, obsession to customers and helping customers with my obsession to sales and uh, helping salespeople um, and building a product uh, that is, uh, is suitable for them. Got it. Okay. So we had this, you're getting closer to customers, you enjoyed that, but you also enjoyed helping the other customer, which is a sales rep. Um, okay, cool. And so can we now look at your relationship with the 20 reps that are helping you sell a sales solution? Um, what are you doing right now to make them more productive? Uh, that's uh, uh, that's a good question. I think that the first, uh, to give you the context, uh, we've just uh, uh, just uh, verticalized our sales organization to that structure. So that's a relatively uh, brand new thing. Um, to get, to be a bit more precise uh, or more kind of more detailed on what we're doing. So um, essentially, first we this is a complex situation where there is a matrix uh, organization involved. And so uh, the first thing that we put in place are multiple communication streams within the sales organization. So things like um, monthly uh, uh, monthly status meetings and bi-monthly uh, pipeline reviews um, uh, accompanied by uh, more instant messaging like uh, Slack and things like that for kind of like, uh, ongoing questions. Um, I guess beyond that and the collaboration piece, uh, which which is what I mentioned, there are the classic ways of uh, enabling them through collateral, right? So working with them on specific pitch decks that they might need, one pagers, things that, that they need to understand in order, sorry, they need to have in order to understand the value of the um, of the product for their their own prospects. Um, and I'm a big believer in getting my uh, hands dirty. So I uh, jump to a lot of uh, sales calls and you know, help by actually participating and providing the value aspect of that. Got it. And that, I totally agree there. But for any sales or revenue ops person listening, would you then advise them to actually like jump into, into meetings and help sell if they can or just to listen? I'd, I'd say, uh, and I've been asked this question in the past, I th I'd say that 
in my opinion, to be a, a strong sales ops professional, you need that experience. You don't need that experience over time. And so you don't need to do it on a regular basis now throughout your two or three years in sales ops, uh, in the, your sales ops role. But I think that if you're coming into an organization and especially in the first uh, 90 days and you really want to make recommendations for sales, uh, for sales leaders and, and their team, you really need to be in a situation where you're at least shadowing a salesperson, right? For a week, just for a week, just be a fly on the wall, join their sales call, see what they're doing in their sales force so that you can optimize processes. Otherwise, any recommendation isn't going to come across as, as credible as it should. Got it. So A, it gives you credibility, but B, it can also help you make better recommendations because you actually understand what's going on. Exactly. 100%. Cool. Um, we did use to ask, is sales experience necessary to succeed in sales ops? Um, and there was actually like a 50-50 response, but I guess you're going to be on the yes side. I'm actually not going to be on the yes side. I'm going to, be, I'm going to say that it's probably not needed. I think you'd you'd have a head start with the change management aspect of knowing how to work with salespeople because you've been in, in their shoes. Um, so the soft credibility will be there. I don't think it's needed. I do think you just need to come with a mentality of not being the external guy, the analytical guy that recommends changes or different sales processes. You need to be part of the team. Right? So you need to be in some, in some uh, shape, uh, uh, a salesperson with them um, at some point to know what they're doing. Got it. And so are you the highest performing salesperson for sales solutions right now? Um, I have a good conversion rate, let's just say. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, it, you go. I mean, I, I was going to say uh, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm probably have uh, other people that uh, sell the solution better than me. Uh, because they are better sales salespeople, and I'm not uh, a salesperson by my profession or my uh, kind of like, uh, early uh, career experience. Um, so I'm uh, I'm very very proud to have that team uh, with me and uh, and seeing them exceeding my uh, uh, my performance. That's very political because you think they might be listening, right? Um, but <laughs> the, the the argument for the salesperson here is it's always easier for like the CEO or the leader or the founder to sell because the customer prefers speaking to them, right? So, so even if you were winning, you have an unfair advantage, and that's what we can say to the salespeople. Yes, that is uh, absolutely true. Uh, and I'll also say, look, I, I, I've been in the, in the sales ops and the sales shoes. So when our sales team is speaking to our prospects, I've been on the other side. I've been a buyer, actually, of similar web myself as part of that journey. So under my... Um, my introduction to similar web was as a customer, as a, an, an act, the actual buyer of that um, of that process, and so having been in those shoes, it's easier for me to speak to to our prospects today and tell them, share with them my dilemmas when I was um, I was considering several sales tools and similar web was among them. Um, so I come across, I guess, as more of like uh, the expert. Uh, or the person who has been in, in that side. Um, I am terrible in the actual follow-ups and closing. Uh, and so that's why I have a talented sales team that does that. I'm just there to provide value. <laughs> it's actually a good strategy, isn't it, for businesses to hire the buyers of their product internally in sales or marketing? Because then obviously you have empathy or you understand who you're selling to because you uh, that person, it's actually, I've seen it a few times before. And it's super, super intelligent, I think. Yeah, and similar web uh, as, a, as a policy and in in an informal policy has been very encouraging uh, those moves. So we've done that uh, in several parts of our business, hiring from our own, uh, own customers or people that used to work with our platform. Got it. Um, okay, so you mentioned about the forecasting. So you have a monthly status meeting. Yeah, I assume that's with all the reps just to check what's going on. Correct. That's like a more of a cross-functional meeting with the reps, with our product team, with the marketing, so that everyone is connected. It's a ability for us to get feedback from from the field, from the sales team. Ability for us to share things like new releases that just have come out to the products, and new values, uh, value propositions that we might have uh, to the market. And but then there's a bi-weekly pipeline meeting, and so is this one meeting with you and all the reps? 
Yeah, so the the more commercial meetings are a bit more often, and they are they are in a bit of a more intimate setting where it's just the sales team and it's also segmented to different segments of the market. So we're, we're having one one meeting, for example, with our inside sales SMB motion and another one with our enterprise strategics because they have different challenges, uh, different sales cycle. Like the, the, the whole discussion is very, very different. Got it. And in those meetings, you're reviewing pipeline, right? Uh, among other things, yes. So, so when the rep comes to you with like these 10 different deals, he has a deal status and then it's your job to run through deal by deal to understand where you should prioritize that person's time. Um, I'd say that it's less about time. It's more, um, I mean, there is an element of prioritizing time. There's also an element of um, us helping them um, thinking of creative ways to push uh, stale opportunities as helping them by sharing like additional value that they might have not pitched or they're, they're stuck with on, on specific deals. And so it's really, I'm trying to come to this from a place of like, we, we want additional revenue. They want additional revenue. Let's think together on how to make that happen. Uh, and I'm leaving the prioritization and the more classic pipeline review to their own sales directors, which is uh, in similar webs uh, organization. And this is a regional organization. So each of them have their own kind of team manager that um, manage them from, a, from an HR perspective. Got it. Okay, cool. So they have their own individual managers who's more like managing targets, et cetera. Um, exactly. I do totally agree with your point about regular sales meetings can either be like, you come here and report everything to us and I'm going to tell you what to do uh, versus let's work together collaboratively to build the pipeline because everyone wants that. And so I did this, I, I was running the FDR team at Epster and I think the meetings before I came in were like a bit like authoritarian. They're like, come and report to us. But then it's almost like just changing the meeting name or the meeting invite and agenda to be like, this is actually a collaborative thing and that it has a great impact, right? Exactly, exactly. And I think that's, uh, that's uh, they, from what I've seen as well, it's just like the most productive way to get the most out of sales people. For sure. Um, okay, and then... Next question is about metrics. So if you could only record one sales-related metric again for the rest of your career, which would you choose? Um, that's a good question. Um, I'd have to ch- probably say, um, I'd have to say that the one thing that is kind of consistent across reps is the number of, opportunities created um i know a lot of people speak about win rates and i'm a big uh, a big proponent on, uh, of win rates and monitoring this but um i think that over time if you can get reps to open new opportunities constantly and not neglect a new pipeline that's the key for a successful sales organization everything else is should be monitored but it's probably more coachable on one to one individual specific where think I'm thinking of it as a funnel you really want to make sure that the top of the funnel is always flowing got it. and that's assuming you have a f- consistent definition for an opportunity right correct yeah got it awesome and the final question is who have influenced you the most in regards to sales slash sales operations in your career um I'd say that uh it's a tough question to answer because in in Critio, we when we joined, we uh, me and my peers we were kind of the first uh, sales ops fr- frontiers in the company. So we joined like a completely brand new organization. We had to establish a lot of things from scratch. I'd probably say that um, Matthew Chenier from um, who was my peer at the time, he's now the VP of Sales Operations in AB Testi um, in France. Uh, he's probably been the most uh, uh, thoughtful partner throughout this uh, sales ops journey um, has given me a lot of thinking around like um, compensation plans, forecasting processes at, at kind of like in early stages. Um, yeah, so he's probably the the, the one that uh, deserves the most credit. Got it. So Matthew, what was his surname? Shinio. Sh- it's Shinio. It's uh, it's one of those French names that I can't really pronounce. Okay, um, that's fine. Shinio. Sh- yeah, that's fine. Awesome. Well, Guy, thank you for this. Let me share a couple of things that I enjoyed. 
I, I like the simplicity of your metric. And I think you can very easily, if you wanted to plot over time a sales team's performance, that's a really good one to choose, right? So if you wanted, you could do one to check health. That's a really good one. And I totally agree. Number, just total number of ops created. Um, I think it's quite interesting. Uh, I think it's really good, actually, that the tool that, and this might not be a good thing that either you've done necessarily, but it's a good thing that Web have done, I think, is bringing you in as that person who knows about this product who has sales experience and also has more like um holistic business experience to to come in and be like the gm of this product so i think that's i think it's quite a good strategic decision and whether you're part of that or not like i think that's really really interesting it's not so much what you said but more about business strategy i think that's really important and then the point we made about hiring buyers i think is super insightful as well so i've got those in my notes um Guy, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Sales of Demystified podcast. If you are listening on a podcast listening application, then please subscribe, rate, and review. And if you have any questions about the show, if you know a guest, or if you have any questions about sales operations, just hit me up at tomhunt at ebster.com. That's tomhunt at ebster.com.